Hi, my name is Sashrika and I'm here with a project that me and my dad worked on, Smartly. So what this project does is it will, de it will detect algae blooms early, from early start. So the reason why I did this project is because earlier in this town, a few months ago, a dog parent had took their dog to a lake for a, for a swim. And then on the ride home, the dog was panting, probably because it drank some of the lake water, which had some algae blooms in it, without knowing. And then when they started panting, it was taken to emergency immediately, but unfortunately it couldn't survive. So prevent that sort of thing from happening, I built this with my dad. So I will give you a little demo of how this works. Would you like to explain the sensors? What kind of sensors you have used? Oh yes. So I've used pH sensor, turbidity sensor, TDS sensor, and temperature sensor. So the reason why I used temp oh the reason why I use temperature sensor is because whenever the al algae like is blooming, so it will trap the it will trap the heat inside and it won't let the heat go like throughout the lake. So it will so the heat will stay at the surface and the temperature goes higher. But that's a secondary thing. But the main thing is because whenever like the temperature goes from 60 degrees Celsius to 80 degrees Celsius, uh, that is like the main place. Like optimal temperature for algae bloom. Exactly. And so like if the other sensors predict it's an algae bloom, to make sure it actually is or isn't, you can check if the optimal temperature is within that or greater or lower. Right, so you can actually eliminate some false alarm. Like if your sensor readings are suggesting there might be an algae bloom, but if you see temperature is below 60, like uh, maybe 40 or 50, you typically the algae, algae bloom, bloom, bloom is not there. Yeah. So you can eliminate yeah. that. So it's sort of like process of elimination when doing that. Yep. And then with TDS, TDS is total dissolved solids. So basically what that will do is it will detect like the dissolved solids inside the water, like any sort of like chemicals or anything like that. Yeah, typically which are released when algae blooms happen. Yeah. And turbidity sensor is what happens when uh, the, the cloudiness inside the water so whenever algae blooms happen, like it gets naturally like cloudy looking inside the water. So you can actually be able to tell from that if there's algae or not, or maybe it's just mud. Yep. And then the pH sensor, based on like what type of al like the algae blooms, like the pH sensor will rise or decrease. Yeah. So basically what happens in algae bloom, like, uh, they consume carbon dioxide from the water, right? So they do yeah. photosynthesis. And as a result of that, as uh, they absorb the carbon dioxide, so your uh, water uh, gets alkaline, so pH level goes high. So that could be a very good indicator if algae blooms are happening. Yeah. And then we have the sunlight sensor, because whenever we have the turbidity sensor, since like it checks the cloudiness of the water, but then sometimes like it's night, so it will think that it's like more cloudy yep. so it will give more false alarms right. so if it's, it's another elimination process yeah and also sunlight is very important factor for photosynthesis so if there are not much sunlight uh, in certain area for a longer period of time and your sensor reading is suggesting that there might be algae bloom but it's very unlikely that uh, algae is uh, blooming if there is no sunlight because they can't do the photosynthesis yeah, so sunlight is one of the key things that you need for photosynthesis. Yep. But if that's not there, then it's not possible. Right. All right, so now we will actually show the demo. So I just put that in. So now we have some clear water inside this tub. And since this is an in-lab thing, we we're doing it inside a container and you can see the data that we have. We have the pH, TDS, turbidity, and all the other sensors that I have mentioned. 
And now, and now I'm going to add some baking soda, which should be able to uh, increase the pH levels. Alright, that should be good. Uh, you want to add the water? Yeah. Now we're adding some. Hold this. Alright. Now we're adding some rainwater that we had for the last couple of days. And now? Uh, it's not enough, but hope we can make some decision. Yeah, I think it's good enough for now. Yeah, and rest it for a while and then uh, you should get some reading. Do you see any changes compared to previous? I can see increase in TDS mm. and I don't know about the diabetes. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can see some increase in pH, but uh, probably that's not the correct reading. Like I was expecting something around 10, 11. Right. Uh, yeah. Like a decrease. Yeah. Right. And the temperature is fine, like you said, the temperature. Yeah, because we didn't like change anything in like the heat. Yeah. Right. And then obviously yeah. likes the same. Right. And then um, you are running a tiny ML model on the device, right? Yeah, so I'm running a tiny ML model on the device using Edge Impulse. Right. So, I can show you. Alright, so here I have created the impulse, as you can see. And then a I've, every couple minutes, I've, I will have the data coming to the helium console. Yeah, um, do you want to talk a little more about the uh, tiny well part of it? Yeah, so basically... So what data, so here I can see you have all these data as your uh, different inputs. And one thing yeah. um, I like to point out, uh, we have collected very few data, so it's not all. So our model is created but it may not perform exactly what we want so all you need is basically collecting data from different lakes in different situations like when there is algae when there is not even like uh, in different uh, seasons like winter versus um, um, for the summer at the moment we didn't have that type of time to do that exactly. we had very limited time so maybe like if this were like an actual like project we would have it for like all seasons year round right exactly so that's the plan yeah and then uh we like to uh, talk about the helium yeah so every couple of minutes our data will come to the helium console so at, at the moment nothing has come yet since yeah it's but been. while we are talking probably we may see some data yeah, yeah, so the red dots basically mean it's just joining. Yeah. And the blue means like it's actually receiving the data. Right. It's, that's the data. Yeah. And what happens after uh, once the data is on Helium Console? And after the data comes to Helium Console, uh, we go into AWS IoT and it should pop up there as well. Okay. And it will, and then the data will be stored in DynamoDB. Okay. And then after. Uh, I've created, I've created this website with my dad. So basically, whenever like the different data shows, we can see in this dashboard of all the different sensors sensors that I showed earlier. Right. Let's see if it showed in the helium console yet. No, not yet. Yeah, yeah but yeah. Uh, eventually, like you yeah. get the data. I think we get it. Yeah. yeah. And that's how uh, you're seeing the data on your dashboard. Yeah. So, yep. And any challenges you like to point out? So challenges was like, like so when we were originally like planning out like the three D printing, like how we were going to print it, mm -hmm. 
So like the sunlight sensor, yep. like ev every way we tried to do it, like it was getting blocked by the sunlight. So like, it's not exactly perfect, but mm -hmm. then again, this is just a prototype. If we ever do make this into like a real project, mm -hmm. we're gonna have to think of something better for like yeah. the actual way we're doing it. Definitely. And one more thing I like to point out, um, so if you remember when we were uh, integrating all different sensors uh, yeah. initially, we found when we put uh, P sensor and turbidity sensor together, we were seeing some uh, like uh, funky changes. values, like yeah, yeah it's it's, randomly changing. Yeah, so like it, sometimes it was going very high, yeah. like the changes. So like we're still not exactly sure what was happening. We're still researching on that. Exactly. But if we find out anything, we'll uh, we let you know. Post on Hackstar. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that's something very critical. We need to figure it out. Like yeah. Maybe uh, both the sensors are interfering because it's in the same water and it's kind of uh, conductive when the water is impure. Yeah. So that maybe uh, related uh, to that, uh, yeah. we have to figure that out. But that's yeah. very critical. At the moment, we are not sure. Yeah. But we, but we have that we out. have seen that. Yeah. It's something that's happened when we are trying to figure out the data. Exactly. Yeah. So our next plan is to go to some lakes and uh, collect some real data and also see uh, how the readings are coming. Yeah, at the moment like we don't have much data but we'll get more data from all the different lakes that we can find. We just had one lake that we could go to at the moment yeah. but we'll get some more data. Cool. Yeah. Good job. Alright. So bye. Hope you're inspired. <laughs>